What is up guys, welcome back. Today I wanna to take a quick look on how we can make a text move along an SVG path. It's a really nice touch, something simple, but that adds an extra look or an extra feel to the website. I wanna see how we can do this on scroll, something similar to the Shivi Shivi website by Locomotive. I think it's a really simple but nice effect that we can make easily using Firm Motion and React. So as always, you can find the source code and the live demo in the description. All right, guys, so the first thing I did here was to create a Next.js application. And so here we have it. And I've also created a footer component, which is right here. And that's where most of the work will be done. And now the first thing we need is to create an SVG where we're going to translate a piece of text on top of it as we scroll, right? So the first thing we need is an SVG path. And so here I have my SVG path. It's a simple curve that I've created inside of the Illustrator, but you could use any tool like Figma as long as you can export an SVG after that. And that's how it looks. I have my div and inside of it, I've imported my SVG. It has like a certain view box, but this doesn't really matter because we'll adapt this with some CSS. And now the result I have here is like just a blank page because I have a fill none. And if I want to actually see my SVG path, I'm gonna have to do stroke and then put it a color. And now I can see that I have my SVG. That's really nice here. And you can see that it's also responsive right off the bat. And now since I want this to be a footer similar to like the Shivi Shivi website, I'm gonna just put inside of the page.js here, a div that's gonna take here a H screen. And so a hundred viewport height of screen. And now I have like a simulation of like what I would have inside of a website. And here I would have my footer. And now I also don't want the curve to be hugging like the bottom of the window. So I'm just gonna add some margin. And here I'm just gonna put the text a bit bigger for you guys. And then in the footer here, what I can do is on the SVG, I can add some class and I can do like margin bottom, like 40. And with that, it's not like directly hugging the bottom of the window, which is good. And now let's say I wanna add some text on top of that curve and I want the text to be following that curve. It's gonna be pretty simple. All I'm gonna do is use the text SVG element and I'm also gonna use the text path inside of it. And so here inside of the SVG, I'm gonna have a text and inside of that text, I'm gonna have a text path. And here I can paste like whatever text that I want. I'm just gonna have some lorem ipsum for now. And now I need to find a way to link that text path to the actual path. And we can do that with an ID and an href. So here I could have my ID equal curve. And here I could have an href and I can target the curve. And so I'm basically saying, hey, put that text along that path. I'm gonna save that. And you'll see that boom, I have my text along my SVG, very simple. And now the text is a bit big. So here I'm just gonna change the font. I'm gonna do something like text uh, six pixels. And now you're gonna think six pixels is a bit small, but since it's responsive, it's actually a bit bigger than six pixels, all right? And so that's a good size for me. And now let's say we want to have the text to be starting like in the middle of the curve. We can add an attribute that's called offset. And here we could have like 50%. It's actually called start offset. And so 50% for the start offset. And now we have the text starting at 50% of the progress of the path. And here I've also just imported a custom font just so that it looks good. For that, I just have a font face inside of the global CSS. And here in the body, I specify that font family. And then for it to take effect, I need to go inside of the layout. And here by default, there's the inter font family. So I'm just gonna take that out here of the body. And now I have my custom font. And I also want it to be in uppercase. So I'm just gonna go back here and specify uppercase. And now we have something like this. And now if I look at my demo, I see that I have around three texts, so three paragraphs. So for that, instead of having one here, I'm gonna have three. So easily I can create here an array. So I'm just gonna have an array of three elements like this and I can map it. And then here I'm gonna have an empty element. I'm gonna have an index as well. And here basically return the text path here. And now if I don't change the start offset, they should all be stacked on top of each other. I'm gonna save that, see what we have and now they're all stacked on top of each other. But now I want to distribute them along the path. So I need to change that offset based on the index. So we can think about it. I want here, if I look at the demo, the first paragraph to be at the start, and then we have the same distance for the two others. So the values that I found was if I take the index and I multiply it by 40, and then I can add the percent like this. And so the first one would be zero, index of zero multiplied by 40, zero plus percent, so 0% for the first one, 40% for the second one, 80% for the third one. I'm gonna save that. And it should look like this, pretty much like the demo here. And now we can add some extra styling to this. So just add some styling here. Now I'm gonna do color red. And I'm also gonna remove the stroke from the curve so that it's kind of invisible. 
So I'm going to save that. And now we have something like this, which looks pretty nice. And now we can start animating this on scroll. You can use any animation library that you'd like. Personally, I like to use Frame Emotion, but you could do this with GSAP easily. And so the first thing I'll need here is the use scroll hook from Frame Emotion. That's the one that I'm going to use to be basically able to listen to the scroll. And here from that hook, I'm going to extract the scroll Y progress. That's going to be equal to the use scroll hook. And that hook requires a target. And that should be a ref. And so I'm going to create a ref here. And now I can give that container to that hook. And I don't need to specify the current because it's actually smart. It understands it's a ref. And I can basically give that ref to the main div here. And finally, another property, I'm going to add an offset. And so that's basically to tell when do we want to start tracking the progress of the scroll and when do we want to stop tracking the progress of the scroll. And so I'm going to take a look here. And so if I look at this position here, it's around the top of the container and the bottom of the window, right? And so it's going to be the start of the container and the bottom of the window. And so that's the starting point. And then when do we want to stop tracking the scroll? It's going to be here at the end of the container and the end of the window as well. So that's going to be end, end like this. And now I'll log the values to see what we have. I'm going to add a use effect. And inside of it, I'm just going to listen here to an event, the change event of the scroll Y progress. And here is going to return me that value. And I can simply log that value here. And now Next.js is complaining because I'm starting to use some client side hook. And so I just need to specify here that I am on the client by doing the use client directive here. And now we can log the values, see what we have. And then it starts at the top. And then when I reach the bottom of it, it goes to one. And now let's say I add another div on at the bottom of the SVG, which I'll do later on. I'll add like a bunch of logos with like a sticky footer. So here I know it's going to be a height of about 250 pixels. And so I can save that. And here I can see if that still works. I'm going to scroll and then it should be one when I reach the complete bottom and boom, now that works pretty good. And so with that, I know I have a nice scroll wide progress that tracks the entirety of that division right there. And so now we have a value between zero and one coming from the scroll wide progress. And we know we need to change the offset here of the text path. And so we can do one plus one. And what's going to happen here is we're going to change the attributes of each text path based on that scroll wide progress. And so here's how we can do this. I'm going to remove the logging here. And the first thing I need is to have some kind of reference to the text path so I can target them. And so for that, I'm going to create here a bunch of text, which is going to be equal to a use ref and it's going to be an array. And then I'm going to dynamically fill that array with all of those text path. And to do that, it's pretty simple. We can do ref, which is going to return itself as a parameter of a function. And here I can do text dot current, which is that ref here of the index. And so zero, one and two for the three text path is equal to it. So the first text path is going to be put at position zero. Second text path is going to be put at position one, etc. And then I also forgot I need to add a key here. So I'm just going to do the index for now. And so now what I'll do simple, I'm going to take that scroll wide progress and similar to how we logged the values, I'm going to do a on and I'm going to listen to the change event. And here I'm going to trigger a function. And now I have the value here, which is a value between zero and one that I can use to dynamically change the start offset of each text path. And so for that, I could do texts.current dot for each. And here I'm going to map all of my text. And here I'm just going to change that to be text. And I could do something like text.set attribute. And I could set here this one, the start offset. And here I could do the value of my scroll progress multiplied by 100 plus the percent. And with that, we can see what we have. It's basically a value now that's going to be between zero and 100% depending on the progress of the scroll. So I'm going to save that. And then here I'm going to scroll and then, okay, it's leaving very fast. Instead, I'm going to do 50. So it's going to be a value between zero and 50%. I'm going to scroll that. And here we can see that all of my texts are basically stacked on top of each other right now because I'm telling all of them to take the same start offset position. And here we can see that they are here. At the end here is 50% of the curve. I'm going to put back the curve here. I'm going to stroke black. And here we can see that that end position at the end of the scroll is that 50% offset, right? And you're going to see if I move my mouse here, it looks like that. Now, obviously I want all of my text to be equally distributed. And so for that, I'm going to use the same logic that I had here. The first one should be at zero, the second one should start at 40, 
and the third one should start at 80. So I'm gonna have actually do it minus 40 at first plus, and I'll do the indexed multiplied by 40. And so the first one is actually gonna be at minus 40% of offset. So it's gonna be a bit outside of the window and then it's gonna come in, right? And so if I save that, leave it like that, they should not move. And here I'm gonna add the percentage. And if I save that now, they should be placed like this. This is actually the third one. This is the second one. And the first one is outside this way. And now it's not doing anything because I'm not using that value here, which is the progress of the scroll. So now I'm gonna add that up inside of the equation here. And all I'm gonna do is do a plus and I'm gonna add that value, which is a value between zero and one and multiply it by 40, simple as that. And I'm gonna save that. And you're gonna see here that everything is moving as I'm scrolling. Of course, now you're gonna see that it's not really smooth. It's a bit choppy. So the first thing to solve that problem is you're gonna see that the movement ends at the bottom of the curve here. So what I could do is either add like some padding bottom instead of having some margin bottom. And now you can see that it's moving all the way down, which is a bit more natural. It looks a bit better. But instead of that, I'm just gonna leave the margin bottom but I'm gonna add an extra div here with a height of 200 pixels. And inside of that, I'm gonna do like a nice sticky footer. And so let's take a look at that. This works like expected. And now it's a bit higher up, which is what I want. And now you can see that when I'm moving here, the scroll bar, it actually looks a bit smooth. But if I do it with my wheel, it's a bit choppy, right? So one thing I like to do when making creative websites is to use a smooth scroll. So what I'm gonna do for that is add a Lennis scroll on top of that to have a smooth scroll. And so that's the Lennis scroll library. I highly recommend it if you wanna do like any kind of smooth scroll on your website. And here I'm just gonna install that. Here I can install it. And then I'm gonna take the basic setup here inside of the page.js, inside of the root, I'm gonna pop a use effect. And inside of it, I'm gonna paste the basic setup. And here I can remove the event, import the library like this. And now I need to specify that this page.js is a client component because I'm having the use effect here. So I can actually go inside of my footer and remove this one because it's gonna waterfall on it since like this one is the parent. So I'm gonna save that. And with that, we have a smooth scroll and this looks like much better to be honest. And yeah, now we have this moving as we scroll. This is pretty good. Now I'm just gonna remove the stroke here. We don't need it anymore. It's kind of itching my eye. And yeah, that looks much better. And that's basically how you move a text on an SVG path. It's quite simple. You simply have to listen to the scroll. In some ways you could use GSAP for that. And then you wanna change the attribute, which is the start offset of each of your text path. And now for the interested, I'm gonna add a sticky footer, something like this, where when I scroll, the footer is actually staying in place. And to me that adds like a nice extra look to that animation, like alone like this in the footer, it, it's a bit boring, but if there's like some extra thing at the bottom, it looks even better. So I'm gonna take a quick look on how we can do this. I'm gonna create here a React component outside of it. It's gonna be like function, I'm gonna call it logos. And here it's gonna return that div. And here I can have the logos. I'm also gonna pass it the scroll wire progress. I'm just gonna call it the scroll progress, which is the scroll wire progress here. And so now I have access to the scroll progress as props. And inside of my public folder, I have a bunch of different logos of studios that I like. So I'm just gonna return them inside of the footer. I'm gonna use the same concept that I had here. I'm gonna create like an empty array of five elements because I have five logos. I'm gonna map that empty element index. And here I'm gonna return an image. And here for the source, I'm gonna target the medias folder, which is this one here. And then it's gonna be the index.jpg. And here I'm gonna add the key. I'm just gonna have the index plus, I'm gonna do I for image. And then just some styling, I'm gonna do height like 80 pixels with 80 pixels, something like that. I'm gonna save that, see what we have. And it looks something like this. Now it's a bit weird. Oh yeah, I need to do I plus one. That's the first thing. And now here they are, I'm gonna put them on the other side. So for that, just go inside of the parent here. I'm gonna do flex, I'm gonna do item center, and I'm gonna do justify center as well. And I'm gonna do gap five, just to add some spacing between each logos. And we should have something like this. I'm gonna add a background black and nice. Now we have just the regular footer. And now instead of having it like this, I want it to become like this, which is kind of like a sticky footer with a reveal. 
And for that, it's actually really simple. I'm gonna use the scroll progress to create that. I basically need to create a parallax. So if you've seen my other videos, you know how I make my parallax. It's pretty simple. I'm gonna have here a Y, which is gonna be the use transform hook of frame of motion. And now this guy needs to transform a value. And the value that I'm gonna transform is the scroll Y progress. And here that value is a value between zero and one. And I want to transform it into another value that's gonna be a value between zero and minus 700. You can check all my videos about parallax if you want more information about using those two hooks together. And so now once I have my Y value, I'm just gonna put it inside of the footer. I'm gonna add the motion tag to actually be able to use that Y value. So I'm gonna do motion here, motion there, and I need to import it from frame motion. And then I can do style and put the Y. And this is looking pretty wild. I think I've messed up my values here. Yes, so it should be minus 700 at the beginning and then it goes to zero. So it's actually at the top here and it goes at the bottom after the scroll progress is equal to one. So I'm gonna save that. And so here at the bottom, it's at its right place. And if I scroll up, you'll see that it's actually moving on top here of the curve. And now it's looking a bit weird because it's moving at the same time as I'm scrolling up and it's actually hiding our SVG, which is not good. And so to fix that problem, it's pretty easy. I'm just gonna add a nested div. So I'm just gonna have to change my structure here. I'm gonna add a parent and inside of that parent, I'm gonna put this guy here. And now what I wanna do is add an overflow hidden to the parent. And so the dimension, I'm gonna put it to the parent and the background as well. And I'm gonna save that. And now as I scroll up, you're gonna see that it's actually not on top of our curve now, which is good. But unfortunately it's not working right. It's kind of not like centered properly. So I'm just gonna inspect that, see what's not working fine. Okay, so this guy here is actually not taking the full height of its parent, which is what I want here. So for that, I'm just gonna go here and do H full, 100% height. And now it's properly placed. And as I scroll up, it gets hidden. And if I scroll down, it's being shown. And boom, with that, we have a nice sticky footer. And there's actually like a slight movement to it, which is what I want. It's like not 100% sticky, but we could change those values depending on the height of our footer, play with those values and have a different effect. Like I could reduce that by half and we have something like this, which is a bit different. And you know, you can play with those values and have the effect that you desire. But personally, I like the minus 700 parallax in combination with a height of 250 pixels. That's like the right values for the effect that I want. And so here we have it. We have the text on curve, we have the sticky footer. And yeah, to me, that looks pretty nice. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. That's how you move a text along a curve with a sticky footer as an extra. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.